Welcome everyone to this new episode of the Privacy Roots Privacy Espresso series. My name is Alessandro Di Mattia, Legal and Executive Officer at Privacy Roots, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Oksana Zanikovska uh, from the law firm Axon Partners based in Ukraine. Oksana is expert in e-commerce, data protection and IP laws, and together with her we are going to discuss a bit about a very recent topic that is the one of the data protection frameworks that are appearing in various sides of the world and in particular from uh, the EU and UK. So Oksana, first of all, thanks a lot for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm glad to see you again and I'm proud to be a part of Privacy Rules community. Our, our pleasure, Oksana, and also we will soon meet together for the Privacy Rules Conference in Brussels. So we also invite our followers to check it as we will have a public event on the 14th November. So you are all invited to come and join us and to meet me and Oksana as well, of course. And going deeper into the, to our topic of today that is very interesting. As we know, we have seen that there is a, a recent UK-US data protection framework that was adopted. And there was another one coming from the European Union that is already um, in, in force right now. Uh, my question for you as a you know expert coming from a country out of the EU and not the UK, of course, you know, why do you think it would be also relevant uh, to know those frameworks and to you know, keep the attention on those uh, frameworks for clients like yours out of the EU and the UK? Mm -hmm, sure. So uh, first of all, let's just keep in mind that the data protection, data privacy framework is about the free movement of personal data from the EU and UK to the US. Uh, this is all about yeah, easing the data transfers. And for some time from the EU perspective, the US was among all those uh, third countries. And Ukraine, for example, is also a third country uh, for the purpose of data transfers outside of the EU and UK. So we signed the standard contractual clauses all the time. But we also often work globally, including in the United States. And Ukrainian IT businesses do not uh, work only with Ukrainian entities and the data of Ukrainian residents. Uh, our IT has headquarters or the clients in the EU or the UK or the US, and they uh, often engage third party providers from all over the world. So our clients, similar to like other clients from non-EU countries, know and care about the GDPR, uh, the UK GDPR, as long as a uh, client works with personal data and treats itself as Global. So, of course, the uh, EU-US data privacy framework is worth the attention of uh, the clients of, from third countries as well. Yes, perfect, Oksana. Thanks a lot for this introduction. And uh, my next question for you is, uh, is more related to, you know, the practical consideration. So what should companies um, from countries out of the European Union and the UK as the one you normally um, uh, advise? Um, what should they consider uh, when transferring data to the US in particular? Uh, and also, you know, what should they consider taking into account what we have seen with those data protection frameworks? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's say um, the company in Ukraine or in another third country often uh, gets data from this, from its uh, EU or UK business clients. And these clients process and act, uh, like activities, their activities are subject to the GDPR or the UK GDPR. And these clients are controllers in most of the cases. And uh, the data transfer rules under the GDPR, they are strict. They ask the controller to transfer data only to the adequate countries from a special list, and otherwise the controller have to apply this additional safeguards. So every time the controller transfers data, for example, to Ukraine or to the US, the controller sign the transfer, the send contextual clauses and perform this transfer impact assessment. Uh, but this is not an easy way. And the US was, well, not in the least of this adequate countries since uh, the Schrems 2 decision in 2020. And what the uh, EU US uh, DPF has changed is that now the US companies certified under this special framework would be regarded as safe for data transfers. From practical standpoint, we need to consider these two main situations in which the DPF means something for us. The first situation is uh, that a business from, is from a third country like Ukraine and has affiliates in the US. And the second situation is when a business from a third country like Ukraine has subcontractors in the USA. 
So in the first situation, our clients uh, with the U.S. affiliate could get certified uh, to work with the EU UK data like safely. Uh, and the EU client would treat the certified U.S. affiliates as more reliable. Uh, this is since the uh, DPF uh, it requires the certified companies to follow uh, onward transfer, security, confidentiality, and so on. And in the second situation that we have our clients uh, with the U.S. subcontractors could rely on the U.S. service providers more safely and clearly state in their privacy notices, for example, uh, we use only reliable partners, in particular those who are DPF certified. But this will have, um, well, anyway, this will have to... Uh, you will still have to thoroughly assess data transfers to subcontractors. For instance, not only check, uh, well, if they are listed in the register, but also check their policies uh, and make sure that the, these subcontractors actually are in, in the listing, are uh, following their policies, not only mentioning that they are <laughs> uh, certified. Yeah. That's, that sounds great. And, you know, I just have, uh, 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 a last question that is related to all of that because we have been speaking about you know dealing with different regulation we already have countries that are somehow trying to simplify uh, these in particular we are speaking about data transfer processing in this case um, uh, with those uh, framework and uh, uh, for example countries like Ukraine are not involved so you have to use as you rightly say you know different approaches and different ways so you know my question for you would be Let's think about companies that are, you know, starting now their activities and their processing and they have to deal with various regulation, for example, with both EU, UK, but even US, you know, which are the key tips, the starting base that companies should look at in order to, you know, make a good first step to get compliant with those various regulations and maybe being able to transfer data a bit more easily or with less, you know, fear of being non-compliant. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do it, for example, on the example of this data uh, privacy framework. So there are some principles under this framework. And first thing that the business should do is to audit its uh, uh, activities, whether it complies with this data, protect data privacy principles. This means, for example, to make sure that they are not collecting more data than necessary or that they give a, a person the choice about their data, that they protect data from access accidental loss or destruction or like to take many other steps. And for this, to make this checklist, of course, uh, well, probably any company will need the help of the privacy lawyer. Um, the second issue is about this handling of the data subjects request, because uh, usually when uh, some company is dealing with privacy matters, with personal data, uh, there are data subjects who could want to know more about how their data is processed. So uh, a company need to have this uh, to be in place is available uh, for their employees uh, to, to protect the privacy of their employees. Because in case, for example, of the data privacy framework, uh, this is it is important that such notices comply with the principles in, in, in this uh, framework. And also, well, uh, again, in case of the data pri privacy framework, it is important to choose the recourse mechanism to uh, decide who will help with resolving the dispute with the data subject. Because uh, the data protection framework asks to include this uh, recourse mechanism to choose it and to include uh, the information about it in the privacy notice available for the data subject. So that's uh, what ste which steps could be made from the beginning. Perfect, Oksana. Thanks a lot for this clear overview and also for your practical tips that are always very useful for our audience and, you know, makes it clear as you were uh, saying in your right, in your first point, that is uh, really essential to have privacy experts in particular from the very beginning uh, when companies are building up their, you know, um, data management uh, activities in particular, because in some cases, starting with someone you know expert in the field would you know um, um how to say that um would leave uh, companies to avoid the experience of having to pay lots of money afterwards to, to change things that are not you know um, respecting the various regulatory frameworks so definitely good to do mm -hmm. that 
even more with experts like you in the Privacy Rules Alliance that can always connect with your colleagues all over the world uh, to make sure that everything is uh, running in the best possible way. Uh, thanks a lot, Oksana. Our time is ending. Uh, it was a pleasure. Um, and I invite everyone to contact you for any additional support. Uh, looking forward to meeting in person in Brussels and also our audience. So thanks a lot to you all. Yeah, thank you.